way I think about sort of sort of the immune mediated disorders, I divide them into autoimmune disorders and autoinflammatory disorders. Autoimmune disorders, which are mediated by antibodies or autoantigen specific T cells, and then the autoinflammatory disorders are those which have a predominant role of cytokine, chemokines, and sort of causing disease pathogenesis. So, what we were discussing during our talk was focused on autoimmune conditions, um, and many of them are antibody mediated. An example of that I had briefly mentioned is Neurofashion 155, where there's enough data now to suggest that these biomarkers are not, not just sort of good, have significant diagnostic value in identifying patients who have nodoparanodopathies, which is sort of a, a variant or a presentation um, which mimics or resembles what we consider CIDP. But animal models have demonstrated that daily administration of this neurofashion antibody from an affected patient into a mice also leads to development of disease or phenotypes similar to a patient, suggesting these antibodies themselves cause the disease. So that's, that's an example of an antibody-mediated condition. The, another subtype or group of conditions are those which are mediated by T cells, where antibodies themselves don't necessarily cause the disease, they potentially help in the autoimmunity through mechanisms, but the actual disease is caused by autoantigen-specific T cells. A good example of that, at least from the central space, um, is a condition called as Kelch 11 rhombin encephalitis, which we had described a couple of years ago, where we have demonstrated there's a clear autoantigen-specific T cell response uh, among these patients against the same protein which encroaches the brain, causes neuronal dysfunction. So these are the two primary mechanisms, I, I think, which contribute to development of our community. As far as triggers are concerned, the two primary triggers which we have known for a long time is one, hidden underlying cancer in a subset of cases, examples being patients with myasthenia gravis having chymomas, other examples being patients with anti-HU or CRIM5 antibodies with underlying small cell cancer. The second trigger is we suspect is infection. Um, there are some very good examples of that, like uh, compiler vector jejunine infection in patients with GBS, patients with herpes simplex virus encephalitis who go on to develop an MDA receptor encephalitis. These are well-characterized examples. And then there are many, many examples we come across frequently in our clinical practice where the patient complains of having a viral prodrome and then two to three weeks later goes on to develop this autoimmune disorder. We don't necessarily know what the underlying virus was in that scenario, but we can still sort of connect the dots and suspect there's a parainfectious role. The third group, which can be challenging and sometimes frustrating is these idiopathic forms where we just don't know what the underlying trigger was. In those scenarios, depending upon the underlying the patient's phenotype and the underlying antibody. Um, if they are, we have a high suspicion for an underlying hidden cancer, we sometimes continue to screen those patients every four to six months for an extended period of time. And in some of these cases, we do find cancer, not necessarily at the time of presentation, but a year later as well.